Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril. Today we've got something a little bit different for you. We are going to be showing you how to create cobblestone bases for your miniatures. Uh, we are going to be using a Warrior of Minister if today because those of you who know my work and uh, who know my, my preferences, I am known as Mr. Minister if unofficially, unofficially. Um, and this is something I've done on all my warriors, all my heroes, and pretty much every model in my Gondor army. Uh, it is one I finished uh, previous for the army, as you can see. He is sporting a very nice little cobblestone base. Uh, the techniques we're going to show you are fairly quick and easy, uh, dirt cheap as well. Uh, but it's quite an effective way of getting a cobblestone base without having to faff around with green stuff and moulds and whatnot. And in my eye, it gives a little bit more of an authentic look to the cobblestones. A mould is great and really, really easy and quick once you've got the uh, technique down to be able to bash out across a whole load of models. But this, although time consuming, I think the irregularity and the uh, variation in the shapes you can get really gives a, a level of authenticity to the uh, the model's base. Okay, so all you're going to need for this today is you're going to need some uh, some cutting implements. We have a small scalpel and I've got a slightly bigger thick scalpel there. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors, which I have here. These aren't probably scissors I should be using, uh, but we have a pair of scissors right there. Oh, fancy glittery scissors. And a little bit of PVA glue, which is just here. There we are. PVA adhesive. A couple of quid from your local hobby shop. Nice and easy. Uh, okay, and then we need a nice source of cardboard. Now for the bases we've been doing here, I've just been using the Games Workshop model boxes. And today, I think again, to channel more power into the Minister of Warrior, we're going to use the Minister of Warrior box. Because I like, I like, I like to think that if you if you use the uh, the whole product, your warriors will be uh, stronger on the field. It's probably a misguided view, and it was just lying around. So let's uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so first you've got to decide how big you want your cobblestones. As you can see here, I've opted for quite small cobblestones uh, to represent the streets of Minas Tirith. You can make them quite nice big flagstones, at which point you'll only, you'll only need maybe half a dozen squares. But we're going to show you how to do these smaller ones today, as that's what we've done for everything else. So what you want to do first off, you want to cut just a rectangle or a square out of your cardboard box. The cardboard from the Games Workshop boxes is quite good because it's thick enough that any paint and glue over it won't weaken the cardboard, but also soft enough that you can bend it and it's malleable enough to cut through without having to uh, to really mess around too much. I'm just going to straighten that edge up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but the neater it is, the better your bricks will be. Let's just give that a trim there. Cool, that'll do. Lovely. What we're going to do now, we're going to take our scalpel. So please be careful if you're using scalpels. Guys, I know a lot of you know what you're doing anyway, but just be aware that they are sharp and they can cause serious damage. Uh, and then you want to work out how thick you want your cobblestones. This is going to be, this line here is going to dictate how wide the cobblestones are going to be. So we are going to make them about this big. And then you just want to score as neatly as you can, just down the length of the cardboard. Now you're going to want, for a miniature like this size, you're going to want four or five strips just to make sure you've got enough. So we're going to stick there on five. You can see it's not penetrated at all. It's just purely to mark out what we want. So now we're going to go back over again and apply more pressure this time and we're going to cut each strip away hello darkness my old friend that one didn't go quite right there let's get rid of the excess there so in theory by scoring it you should have a nice guideline and not do what I just did there and completely mess it up okay let's try on the second one yeah so you just want to follow the score line all the way down there we go lovely and separate the strip from the cardboard Okay, now as you can see here, I've got my strips of cardboard, got my strips of cobblestone. Uh, I did cut out an extra couple uh, at the end there, just because A, that one that we uh, we messed up to begin with, and just to make sure I had enough. So now what you want to do is decide how long you want each cobblestone. Flip over. There we go. Now we are going to go, like I said, a similar size to the cobblestones on this guy who I've done, just so he ties in with the rest of my army. 
So we can probably line up a couple of these at once to be fair, but I'll do one just so it's nice and easy. So with a, you can, you can use scissors for this. I used to use scissors for this. It's just a bit quicker, uh, but for a cleaner cut, you can use again, your scalpel. I've got a slightly thicker scalpel here and you want to just mark out exactly where you want your cobblestone. So we're gonna go about that thick is ideal. And just press down and separate off. Probably a bit easier to use scissors, but. And then just rinse and repeat across the whole strip. Again, you can see we've got six nice little cobblestones right there, ready for affixing to the base. So let's just finish off these other strips now. Okay, so now we have our individual cobblestones all cut out and ready to be applied to the base of your brave stalwart Gondorian. You can see that with a few of these cobbles, we've cut them in half diagonally to form some rudimentary triangles and squared off shapes. These will be used to fill in some of the more difficult gaps in the base and represent broken or chipped flagstone very nicely. This also just helps give a sense of wear and tear and further push the authentic look for the base we want to achieve once finished. We're going to be covering the entire base of the model. We're going to be applying all the individual flagstones to the bases using PVA glue. The reason we're using this is that it spreads really nicely and evenly and also allows you a small window of opportunity to reposition any stones that you may want to during the application process before it dries. Trust us, we made a few mistakes, we were grateful for this window of opportunity. Now, with an old brush, you don't mind getting a bit gluey, start to apply the PVA over the model's base in stages. We're not covering the whole base at once and instead progressing in stages. This is down to the fact that if the glue dries in an area you haven't reached yet, it will give a slight uneven look to the flagstone texture once finished. However, if this is a look you like, then by all means feel free to do so. So now we're just going to apply some glue to the front third of the base here. You need a decent amount on your brush to make sure it spreads well and make sure you get a nice even coverage across the area you are currently flagstoning. Once you've coated the first area of your base, using the very tip of the scalpel, gently poke into the flagstone and set it on the base where you'd like it to sit. There are a few things to take into account here. Firstly, do not worry about overhanging the base. As we said, we have a clean up method to fix this once we're all finished. Secondly, if using Games Workshop card from the box or any other two-sided card, as we are here, try and make sure the shiny side of the cardboard is the side in contact with the adhesive. This will prevent any glue from soaking through to the more porous side of the card. Make sure you don't apply too much pressure when lifting the flagstones onto the base. We want to minimise the number of visible blemishes on the base and big dents from a scalpel blade will cause harm to the overall finish. As we're using PVA glue here, you can manoeuvre the stone into the position you want with relative ease before the whole thing dries. We want to offset the placement of the bricks in the following rows to give it an almost brickwork effect which will help keep the base looking visually interesting, leaving a small gap no wider than about the edge of the scalpel blade between each stone which will represent nicely the grouting holding each stone in place. We're using some of the damaged stone here to further reinforce that realism we want in a finished product. These damaged stones are also really handy for manoeuvring and positioning around the feet and any other areas of the model that interfere with the original patterning.
Once you're happy with your stone placement and the base has had sufficient time to dry, we're going to be applying some fine modelling sand in random areas on the base which will just serve to represent any debris and detritus you would find scattered around an age old city such as Minas Tirith. As with these stones, we apply this with PVA glue. Make sure you don't overdo this if you don't want to overwhelm the base with too much sand here and undo all of our awesome work so far. Now everything should, and hopefully, should be dry and stable for our little cleanup. As you can see here, there are a number of stones that overhang the base, and this simply will not do. Place the model firmly on a flat surface, and using a fine scalpel blade, gently apply pressure to these edges where you want to cut off. We recommend following the curvature of the base itself as much as you can to create a really nice, smooth, rounded finish to the model when finished. Any stones that pop off here for whatever reason can easily be reapplied or covered over with more sand. Trust us, we add a couple ourselves. The Minas Tirith streets are hardly well maintained after so long. Please always remember though, these are tools, not toys, and are sharp and dangerous. Do not handle if you're not prepared to. Treat them with respect to avoid any mishaps or injury occurring. And once you're happy with your model, you're ready for painting! Hooray! Here we have some different examples of our cobblestone bases. These fine minister of warriors covered in flagstone, ready to fight for the white city against the forces of Mordor. The Gilead veterans have been based with minimal sporadic cobblestones in a more wilderness themed base to represent ruins in the wilds of Athelion. Grima here has been based with larger, wider flagstones to represent the marble flooring of the Tower of Orthanc. Thank you guys so much for watching, we really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, this will be the first of a, uh, a good few tutorials coming out, coming out soon which will explain and detail how to base and theme your models around certain areas of Middle Earth as well as the start of our new terrain series which will be hitting YouTube very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care, enjoy and as always, happy hobbying. <laughs>